Well, it's the bike that I've gotten more DMs about than probably any bike that has come out this year. It's Triumph's brand new entry-level motorcycle, the Trident. They've revitalized the namesake, they're coming out and they are swinging hard to try to destroy everything in the middleweight 650-ish class. But have they done it? Let's take a look today and find out. What is going on everybody? It is your boy, Amy New, back at it once again with another great video for you guys to check out. Today we're talking about the Triumph Trident. We're gonna see the specs, talk about the looks, just kind of discuss the motorcycle in general, and see if it really is the new king of the crop as everybody in my DMs keeps telling me it is. But before we get started today, I wanna tell you guys about my website, yamminoob.co. It is the best place for aspiring and beginner riders to join up, ask our communities questions on our Discord server, and just have a fun time. It's basically like a bike night that never ends. I'm on there literally every day. I answer people's questions, hang out with everybody, and have some fun here and there. Um, we also give away a ton of motorcycles on the website too. Right now we've got a Ducati Panigale V2, a Kawasaki Z650, a Triumph Street Scram, We've got a Honda CBR500R and a Harley Davidson 883. Those are part of separate sweepstakes. So hit the link down below and find out how you can join up and win those amazing motorcycles. We've also got some fun stuff coming later in November as well. You're not going to want to miss it. But let's get into the Triumph Trident. All right, so Triumph's had years to study this entry-level middleweight 650-ish CC class, and they've kind of come ready to annihilate the class. I'm very happy that Triumph did not half-ass this attempt. I'm very happy that they didn't, you know, just randomly pull something together or try to make some street trouble with a smaller engine that's priced at like $10,000 or something. I think they've done very, very well here. Now, it's very important because Triumph doesn't really have an entry-level motorcycle before this one. Uh, before this, the Street Triple 765 was your entry-level sport motorcycle from them. Uh, you could get a Bonneville as a first bike from them, but none of those were really fine-tuned for the entry-level rider in my opinion. So this new Triumph Trident slides in very nicely in the market, in my opinion. It's not a twin, it's not a four-cylinder, it fits its own mold. It's the only new three-cylinder bike on the market that is appropriate for a new beginner rider, in my opinion. So let's talk about the first impression looks of this machine, because I think they are really important. Now they're always subjective, but Triumph has delivered a very handsome motorcycle that pays tribute to the past, but also looks like a modern ride. If you squint your eyes, it kind of looks like an SV650 for some reason. Reason. Um, I think it's just due to the round headlight and some of the ergonomics and general feel of the bike. But if you look more closely, it definitely has its own character and feel. The rear end is totally different from an SV650, um, but it's kind of hard to mess up a design like this. You got a nice big round headlight, good looking bars, good looking motorcycle, well proportioned, and I think they've done a great job. One thing that I like too is seeing photos of people next to it. It looks like a very small and tidy motorcycle, which is really cool. It looks like it's gonna be approachable and not intimidating for the beginner rider. So let's look at some very important specifications on this machine, because it's brand new and there's a lot to talk about. So it's a 660cc three cylinder engine, it's based on the 675cc original Street Triple and Daytona platform, but it's got a longer stroke and a smaller bore, which means it's more torque down low and it doesn't rev as high. So it's got a 10,500 RPM redline. Now, as many of you guys know, the 675cc mill from Triumph is literally one of my favorite engines of all time. I've had three of their motorcycles in the Daytona flavor. My current race bike is a Daytona 675R. I really, really like this engine. I think it works really, really well. This one in particular, the 660cc, is gonna make 80 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque, and it's tuned to make peak torque way down low so you get that nice burst of power when you're bopping around your favorite back streets. It's 412 pounds, ready to ride, so it slides in very nicely and competitively with the SV650 and the MT-07, which Triumph has literally spoken by name that they are going after the Z650, the MT-07, and the SV650, which is pretty awesome. The big feature on this bike to me is the Showa non-adjustable forks at the front end. They're upside down, and it's got a monoshock at the rear with preload. And honestly, it's a big deal because the 650cc class right now, except for the CB650R, Basically all their front suspensions suck ass. Um, they're all really budget feeling and not very great. And the only bike 
right now that you could get that actually had decent suspension was the CB650R, but it had a way higher price tag than some of these other motorcycles. So I'm super proud to see Triumph put a proper front end suspension on this thing and not let it slip by the wayside. Uh, it's got Nissan dual discs up front with ABS. It's got riding modes, road and rain, which is pretty awesome. No other bike in the class currently has this. It's got a TFT plus an LCD dash, Bluetooth connectivity on the dash. Um, one thing that I want to point out is Triumph is known for its beautiful fit and finish on its motorcycles. That is not me as a Triumph simp saying that. If you go to any Triumph dealership, look at their bikes compared to the Japanese bikes. They're always a little bit higher on the build quality, in my opinion. It's also gonna come with a Pilot Road 5 as a standard tire, which is really awesome. I'm tired of seeing on the 650 class these budget OEM crappy tires that come on and the Z650 is plagued by that right now. It's got some weird Dunlop Sport Max tires that just spins and has nothing in it. There's no grip. Uh, the Pilot Road 5 is a much better tire. Traction control can be turned off, which is really cool. It's got a quick shifter up and down as an optional extra, which is really awesome, but I'm not really sure if that makes sense for a beginner rider if you're getting this as a first or second motorcycle. I don't really think that a beginner oriented bike should have quick shift up and down. Uh, I think you should learn to use the clutch as your first motorcycle and you shouldn't be relying on technology to help you out in that specific way. Triumph wanted to match the twin cylinder bikes in the category with the low down revs, the MT07 at 689 cc pulls super nice down low and hopefully the 660 mil from Triumph does the same. It's a new chassis, it's a steel tubular frame on this machine, it's not some fancy aluminum frame or anything like that. It's got a shorter wheelbase than the street triple, it's, but it's got a less aggressive rake and trail so that bike isn't standing up on its end on the front end and super twitch or anything. It's got a bit of a more relaxed feel to it. 31.7 uh, inch seat height, which is pretty awesome. It's very approachable, just like other bikes in this category. And it's cost $7,999, which is just awesome. I'm so happy Triumph did not launch this bike at $9,200 or $9,600 or some super premium price point. You don't have to make excuses for this bike now. You can just say, hey, I got the Triumph. It's a better bike. It costs basically the same. They did a good job with that. Uh, it's gonna be available by the end of January in dealerships. And one thing that Triumph is really touting here, it's got a 10,000 mile service interval, which means a low cost of ownership. They wanted to make that a big deal for the entry level rider, and I think they've done a good job with that. So competition, let's talk about it. The MT-07, it's just got revamped. It's got the new Cyclops LED, you know, crazy aesthetic to it, which I really enjoy. But I do think the Triumph is gonna be better. Now, the MT-07 is gonna cost $7,599, and which is $400 more for the Triumph Trident, you're gonna get the triple cylinder soundtrack, five more horsepower, way better suspension and handling, and yes, I can say that because I know for a fact the Triumph with its frame and its show up front end is gonna feel so much better to ride than the MT-07, which is not a very large bar to clear there. It's got a cooler dash and features, and I think it's a bit of a knockout. But the Yamaha might be a little bit better because the cross-plane twin is still a very favorite engine of mine, and even though the MT-07 feels like some weird pogo stick of a motorcycle, it's still a ton of fun to ride and will wheelie on command basically anywhere. It remains to be seen if the Triumph Trident will have that sort of fun, effervescent character baked into it. If it's anything like the Street Triple, it's probably not gonna have that that it's probably gonna feel a lot more buttoned up and just a little bit more, you know, mature than the MT-07. The Z650 was recently revised as well for 2020. It cost $7,249, so it's a little bit cheaper than the Trident, but for $750 more, you get an engine with way more character and pizzazz on the Triumph. The Showa upside down forks cannot be overstated as well. It's a great improvement on the class. The Z650 is a pretty peppy and fun bike that looks cool. We've got one in the shop right now, and it is quite fun to ride around, but compared to the Triumph, it, it just looks a little bit bland. It makes about 10 more horsepower and torque than the Z650. But the Cowie might be a little bit better. It's got a full TFT display. It's thoroughly modern, but after riding it, I'm not really sure that the Z650 can compete with the Trident. Now, what about the SV650? That's also one that's always been there for people. It costs $7,499. And the Trident is better because, well, it's got more power, an extra cylinder, better suspension, way better brakes, $19.99. Called Suzuki, they want their Takikos back. And uh, I just think that the Triumph Trident is gonna be a better bike than the SV, which again, isn't saying much. Uh, but the SV650 is still a tried and true platform. It's gonna be the God tier platform for starting on a motorcycle, in my opinion. It can be easily transitioned as an adventure bike, a scrambler, a track bike, a commuter. It's a very flexible motorcycle that has tons of aftermarket support and knowledge base about it that the Triumph Trident just doesn't have. If you want a bike that's bulletproof, 
easy to understand and very intuitive. The SV650 is gonna be a great choice for you, but the Triumph Trident, I think, provides a little bit more character and pizzazz. Now, the number one competitor I wanted to talk about is the Honda CB650R because I think it's actually the closest to the Triumph Trident than the twin cylinder bikes. It's got a multi-cylinder engine, four cylinder to be exact. It revs out pretty high, it makes about the same amount of power. But the big problem is that Honda's gonna charge you $9,199 for it. This is damn near $10,000 out the showroom floor for this machine. So I think the Triumph is better because it makes about the same amount of power, it's way cheaper, has Triumph build quality, which is basically the same, if not better than Honda's build quality. And I just think that the Triumph Trident is gonna provide a lot better bang for buck over the Honda. Now, the CB might be a little bit better because it's the closest competitor to the Triumph, but the price is all wrong. The Triumph is gonna have more usable low down torque and it's probably why people love the 650 Twins class so much. It would be great to ride these back to back and see which one is preferred, but I do think the Triumph is gonna take it here. So what's my final verdict on this machine? I think it's awesome that Triumph is tackling this category in the only way they know how. They're building a triple and making it premium, but not skipping out on the price and making it crazy. I think given simple economics, the price is super affordable for people and they'll probably sell a ton of these bikes. It's a great looking machine that anyone would be proud to own and ride. You know, Yamaha really did not come out and surprise us all with some new awesome MT-07. They did a light refresh on it. So I personally think the Triumph Trident is currently the king of the 650cc class naked bike. It's priced well, has way better suspension than any of the bikes in the class except for the Honda. It's got more features, it makes more power, and compared to the Honda, which is its closest rival, it costs over $1,000 less. Triumph has knocked it out of the park and I can't wait to swing a leg over one. I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I will probably buy one as a giveaway bike. I think it's exciting thinking about the Trident as a potential platform too. I would love to see a Tiger 660 based on the bike. It'd give us a comfortable, sensible T700 competitor Triumph. That would be really, really cool. If you can keep it priced under $10,000, that would be excellent as well. And I think if you didn't put any dumb farkles on it or stuff like that, people would really be into the bike and buy it. Give us a bare bones, simple middleweight ADV and you could do really, really well. I'd also really love to see an ultra lightweight, fully fared version as an RS660 competitor. However, that will literally never happen, but a guy can dream, right? I'm really hopeful to see some awesome Triumph factory options for this machine as well. Triumph is well known for providing their users and their customers a lot of different factory add-ons and options, which is really cool. So this should be no different. I say hats off to Triumph for this new Trident. I think it's a knockout bike and they're gonna sell a ton of them. Well, I had a partner, how's it going? Now this video is over, but I'll tell you what, you click on this one right over here, you can keep watching yourself some Yammy Noob. Now if y'all didn't know, we're based out of Austin, Texas, so click on that video, you might check out something cool.